What I want to do now is I want to focus on those activities that are going to pay you money because those are the things you want to do every day. We've been talking big picture. I want to bring you down now. Not really bring you down. <laughs> I want to bring you up to a level where you can see what's going to make me money, what do I have to do every day. And the best person to help with that is the incredible uh, Shelly Mitchell. So please welcome Shelly Mitchell. Is it on? Can wow. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. OK, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it for Shelly Mitchell. This Thank you. Yeah. This is Caleb's mother. She's a Caleb's veteran of two, of two tours in Iraq. Uh, Afghanistan, too? Panama for just cause, Panama. and then Saudi Arabia, Desert oh, Arabia. Storm. Okay. Two combat Desert matches. Storm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Combat. Yeah. She's awesome. She's an incredible woman. Look at what she's created over there. And Where is he? you have so much. He's so cute. She is so great. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Go I think kick, so. I, I just, Thank you. Go kick their butts, will you? I am. We're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is, so those of you know me? Activities. Money. So we're going to talk about making money. You guys have learned a lot of things this weekend. I've been here listening to it. I've gotten some ahas, especially the one yesterday when Dwayne talked about intention. Some of you may or may not have been there. He says, what's your intention? And I came and I was like, oh, my intention's to meet some friends, make some money, da, 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 da. No. What's your real intention? What is it you want, the difference you want to make in this world? And we had some awesome answers that came out of that. When I started, when that tweaked my brain last night, I really started thinking about bigger and better things. So we're talking about Get Your IPA On, which is income producing activities. And um, sorry, we're having technical difficulty. <clears throat> but I want to tell you a little bit about me. If you didn't hear that the other day, it is in the book. But um, my company is My Personal Business Coach. I also have a company called My Personal ADHD Coach. I'm a certified business coach, but I'm also certified in ADHD. What does that mean for you? That's not the right one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Say thank you. So my background, did you find that? Don't worry about saving it. Just open the one that's there. Yep, that's all at the A, B, C. Yep. Up to the top. Perfect. I guess I just hit that for wherever you want to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Cute and efficient. He is. He is. If that's not always comes together, does it? They're either cute or efficient. <laughs> so, <laughs> so women entrepreneurs are funny because we get more concerned about boxes to be able to ship our products out rather than when kids are sitting in them playing with them. Where parents, you know, we don't, we kind of get things conflicted. We're there working at home, working on the computer. We wander the laundry room, we run back, we go back to the laundry room, we come back. And you realize you still don't have anything in your hand. My son said, Mom, you take your meds today? I said, why? He goes, you went to the laundry room three times, you still came back with nothing. Oh, I just remember what I forgot. So I go back in there. In the meantime, I was working on somebody's financial statement, if that makes you feel any better. So those numbers came out pretty good. So I created a process called the Right Brain Solution, which is for the creative right brain entrepreneur. I know we don't have any of those here. Those are the people who are smart, driven, creative, have tons of ideas, do a lot of researching, not too much doing, <clears throat> get distracted by the squirrels. Right? <clears throat> so I just, we just had a book came, uh, come out that I was a co-author for called More Ways to Su Succeed with ADHD. Some of the tips that were in this book I'm going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to make money in your business. I've been to several conferences this year, and some of the things that people have asked is, what really pisses you off? What gets you passionate and, or hot and excited about your business? Why do you do what you do? Would I do what I do? And why I want to help people is just pisses me off when people are so good and have such amazing strengths and gifts and know how to make a difference in this world but aren't making any money at it. They're bank. <laughs> Got a whole table over here going, yep. <laughs> so what, what pisses you off? What gets you passionate and excited about the difference that you want to make in this world? And wouldn't it be great if you could equal the income 
to what it is that you're good at. You are worth it because you have been blessed with these gifts that you're so good at innately in such a way that you take it for granted because you think, if I can do this easy, everyone else can. Everyone here can write a multi-million dollar budget, financial statement, historical zero-based budgets, balance sheets, right? No. Oh, I can't write a blog. This one can. <clears throat> we also have another book coming out how to, on how to get what you really, really want. So I was in the Army, as you guys might know. Two wars, I was an Army sergeant. I met Caleb's dad, he was a private. <laughs> he was younger too and hot. Um, <clears throat> I was one of 77 women in the world at the time who had two combat patches. And because of that, back when I was 22 years old, many, many years ago, Cosmopolitan Magazine named me the first fun, fearless female. And that's when the column started, which exists today. It's a little bit different, but back then it had to do with Thank you. Women who were average women or normal women, not famous women, who were making a difference in the world. That was the first one, and that's how the article started. Of course, it's very old now. Thank you. Thank you. Helen Gurley Brown, who became my mentor over a few years. She recently passed away in the last two years, if you guys know her. She was the editor-in-chief of Cosmo magazine. <clears throat> then, I had a picture. We were trying to find some pictures earlier. I had a picture of me in my Army uniform. My drill sergeant said, Private Mitchell, when I was young, he was, I never thought I'd meet a real Private Benjamin. <laughs> but then what happened? So I got out of the Army. I met Caleb's dad. We got married. I had him. He was so cute. I finished school. I worked full-time during the day. I went to school 15 hours at night. I now, then became a single mom. Caleb was going from babysitter in the day to babysitter at night. We had to move around for my career. I wasn't taking care of myself, but I was very driven. Then what happened? That's scary to look at. It's 262 pounds. Caleb was in that picture. I cut him out. Um, but I got up to 262 pounds, and I looked in the mirror, and I was almost 40 years old. This is only five years. This is not even five years ago. And I looked in there, and I said, what in the heck happened to me? I'm smart. I'm driven. I'm creative. I fall down a lot, but I get back up. I've been in two wars, for goodness sakes, and I have this amazing child. I've got to be able to show him something different. There was a woman in my BNI group who was a coach. A real coach, certified life coach. Come see me. Come see me. I'm going to help you lose weight. What can you do that Jenny and Nutri couldn't do? <laughs> she held a mirror up in my face for the next year and a half, and it helped me see what was really important to me. At the time, I didn't think that I was worth it, but he was. He needed a role model and example so I could show him what it was like to go out and build a business. That's when I decided, after 23 years of the corporate world, running companies, moving around. I was running multi-million dollar companies, making 150000 a year. But I couldn't take care of myself. I decided it was time to change my life, and I decided to start a business coaching practice. It wasn't until I found out that he had undiagnosed ADD that I decided to go back to school for ADHD to help him. It ends up being a good incorporation. But I'm going to take this picture off because it makes me upset. There we go. <clears throat> so let's talk about what it's, I feel joyous because I was able to put on like this, what is kind of tight here, this tight skirt <laughs> and this shirt and the miraculous, most is part of the sea bra and everything else. And <clears throat> so I was able to, I'm able to do that and get dressed up and it's, it's fun. But you know what was most important? And this is what she did to me. She says, you told me, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is what a coach does, you told me that your son has been quiet in the back wings, watched you climb the corporate ladder. You've been able to do all of this stuff in your life, and he was just this quiet, good kid. He never really asked for much. He's 12 years old now. His dad just died. You, all he's asked you for is to go snow skiing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you said, one, your mm-mm doesn't fit in the snow pants, and two, when you fall down, you can't get back up. So are you telling me that he that that chocolate lava cake that you're complaining that you gave up is worth more than him? <sighs> I think that's when my crying started. <laughs> and I said, no, I wasn't worth it, but he was. And that's when I started making those changes in my life. You have to know what your why is. You have to know why you're doing this. If you're not worth it, fine, you'll figure that out later. There's so many people in this room that can work through that with you. They're always trying to touch me. <clears throat> But you have to know what that why is. Otherwise, you're going to leave here, 
and you're going to put the pile on the desk. Even though you do the planning today, the phone's going to ring, the dog's going to get sick, the spouse is going to be, where are you? Why isn't there money in the bank account? And all life's going to take back over. You have to know why and what you're here for and why you need to put money in that bank account. Money is not about the car or the house. What are you going to do with it? I wanted to take my 12-year-old snow skiing. I'm still paying off the medical bills from that, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. He goes, Mom, that was really cool. You got air. And they were taking me down on an ambulance. I'm being serious. I know it sounds like I'm joking. But it was, it was an experience. <laughs> so now, so I get to kind of look cute. I met the man of my dreams about three and a half years ago. We live in South Florida. We decided to move. We, we, we created a vision board. I'm going to lose 100 pounds. I'm going to move to where it's snow, um, not snow, get out of the snow, move to where it's sunny, have my own coaching practice, help women with the things that I struggled with my whole life, which was I kept getting in my own way and falling down and getting back up. And I wanted to have the, like, this great relationship with my son, and I wanted him to be emotionally and physically happy, healthy, living within his true values and finding his passion. That's what I wrote down in January. He was failing school and didn't talk. He has said more words today than all of us put together. You know, he didn't talk eight months ago, but that's what I wrote down and I kept reading to myself. Also, I got involved in the Junior League, made lots of friends, then I came to WPN, which is a whole other story and we don't have time for that because I'm limited on time. But when I got to WPN, I finally found those relationships of the people who, they just love you to success. You've all been to the other groups where it's business card, business card, business cards. Oh, really? What do you do? Well, let me tell you what I do. Oh, really? What do you do? Oh, that's nice. Let me tell you what I do. Not at WPN. They just listen and they hug you and love you to success. Half of them don't charge for their services. It's been really good for me lately, but I'm working on that. <clears throat> My health coach, ooh, she's been a hell of a deal. But now that we're getting around, oh, she's awesome. <clears throat> So when are you going to decide why you're doing this and why it's important to you enough to start getting the money that you are worth? Because what you do, Joanne, nobody else can do. You can't even put a price tag on that. I had to call her to get her to fix one of my clients who couldn't pass a test because she works on that NLP stuff in your brain. <laughs> when are you going to decide? So if you're smart, creative, you have high energy, too much research, all that good stuff. You have trouble. Who has trouble prioritizing because it's all important? Yeah. <clears throat> Your income is less than you desire, and it's also less than you know you deserve. But what about that final question that I ask? Are you starting to doubt yourself, have self-esteem and confidence issues, and wondering if you can actually pull this off? Not you. We know how you were. <laughs> So there's three types of people in this world. There's those who make things happen, right? Then there's those who watched what happened. And there's those who said, wonder what the hell just happened. Which one are you? The ones who make things happen are focused on one thing, and those are income-producing activities. They know, there's no way you can do it all, but they know what activities that you can put into your daily life and weekly life that's going to make you money. You have choices of a hundred different things, but they know which ones to focus on. The key to your success to launch your business or to leap your business, which means you don't have one and you're getting it started, you're launching it, or to leap is to take it to the next level. It's the catapult process. And the catapult process includes get your IPA on, baby, and that means Income-producing activities. We have a few people here who were in the class last. The first one is C, clarify your direction. You're going to get clear on what you really, really want. Clar and a lot of the stuff we talked about this weekend, you're going to be working on this all day. Clarify your vision, what you really want, your mission, your values. The impact statement is so important, knowing exactly how you serve other people but knowing what their pains and challenges are. Not what you think they are, but what they said that they are. I had a woman one day, she was really overwhelmed and she was having trouble. And she, actually, I was asking her if she was coming to Unconference. She said she couldn't. She didn't have the money and she was really overwhelmed. She's a money coach. Um, <laughs> and I said, what can I help you with? How can I? She goes, well, I really need you to send referrals to me. Somebody who 
has fear and anxiety and needs a breakthrough. I said, well, that's great, but if she has fear and anxiety and needs a breakthrough, she doesn't know it. It's not till after she had a breakthrough can she say, I had fear and anxiety and I had a breakthrough. So what are her current, that, those people, what are their current pains and challenges? You have to know what that is because that's how you're going to get that out in your marketing message because those are the only way people are going to come to you with their checkbooks to pay you for what you offer. There are 10 key words that are vague that don't sell. One of them is empowerment. If you have empower all throughout your message, that's, people don't come give you money for the word empowerment. They do come give you money when you tell them that you're going to help them with their back pain so that they can go snow skiing with their son. But the empowerment, there's certain key words, and that's something that I go through in the IPA class, that don't sell. They're great words. We got out of fear and anxiety, and now we had a breakthrough, but they don't sell. You also have to know what your marketing funnel is, your target market, and your niche. A is for assess and evaluate and create a strategic plan. So you have to know where you're at. You got to know where you want to go, but you have to know where you're at, assess, and then create that plan. You have to have a roadmap, a step, all step-by-step -step process into success. If you don't have a roadmap, if you don't know the address to the Outlet Mall, how are you going to get there? Uh, my car automatically goes there, but how, does, how do you mostly get there? If you don't know where you're going, how can you get there? <clears throat> also, your standards. You have to know what your standards are, and I'm going to tell you, and those of you who know me have heard me say this before, there is always going to be somebody taller, richer, thinner, with bigger boobs. There just is. So you have to know what your standards are. Don't hold yourself to other people's standards. Hold yourself, yourself to the standards for you and what you want to have in your life. Not what someone said you should have, but what it is that you truly, truly want. Also, prioritize. In this, this is all part of A, is having priorities and being able to focus on the most important things. There are companies and programs out there that talk about the six most important things to do. I have a, a recording that I've done. It's called the six most important things to do list is BS. That's too many. If you're the kind of person who's smart, energetic, and driven, you're out there doing great things in the world. If you did three great things in one day, wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. Right, three. Three is the number. Because if you set yourself up for six and you only get one or two, then you beat yourself up for it. But if you set yourself up for three and you get it done, you feel good. You've built the successes. The most important thing to, work, to, to know about that is that always one of the things on your list each day needs to be income producing activity. <clears throat> Think before you act also and invest the time to plan it out. Whenever you're setting up your calendar during the day for each day and also for the week and also for the month, and I learned this too, um, Avon Corporate had hired me uh, to work in their corporate office and train about 1,500 different women in sales for them. They taught us about planning. They gave us an entire half a day each week to plan out our week, an entire day to plan out our month and also our quarter because they really knew how important planning was because you achieved your goals. So if you're going to invest, you need to invest the time in making your plan and then plug it into your calendar. T for catapult is take action. Take action? What? What? C-A-T, catapult. Take action. And that's focus on consistent daily activities. If it's only one thing a day, but just make sure that it's consistent and it's daily. There's a lot of people that I work with who are in direct sales and MLMs, and they think because they killed themselves this week, they can stop the following week. You can't do that. It's better if you just do a couple of things each week because you lose that momentum. Because a lot of times your activities that you do this week don't necessarily reflect the following week and it builds on itself. And if you stop, it's like having to recreate the wheel and start over. And again, when you're taking action, you make sure that at least one thing is <laughs> producing activity. A, oh my goodness, this is my favorite one, accountability. This is the only reason why I'm, I get into action. This is the only reason why I lost the 100 pounds. This is the, I have a little accountability partner at home. Um, 
You have to be able to be, you have to celebrate your achievements and successes no matter how small they are. You remember when the kids were little and they went potty on their own, you went, yay, good boy for going potty, and they were so excited. They wanted to do it again and again and again. And if they messed up, that's okay. We didn't focus on that. You focus on when you do well. But you have to do this for yourself. If you put a goal in your mind that you're going to make three calls that day when you normally don't and you do it, you need to really give yourself an attaboy. There's two reasons for that. And this is right brain versus left brain explanation. Right brain explanation is when you tell yourself you did a good job, you start building the self-esteem and that confidence to do it again and to do it again and to do it again and do bigger and more. The left brain explanation for those of you who are like, we got to tell ourselves we have to be, that we're nice to ourselves and we did a good job. In the left brain, and I learned this in, uh, because people with ADD have a little bit slightly different brain wiring. I know you couldn't tell or anything, but uh, <clears throat> is with left brains, when you go back and look at the process of how you accomplish something well, Let's say I was working with Kat Wagman and she says, I made five phone calls this week. And then blah, 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 blah. I said, I want to hear about the blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about the five phone calls. And this is what a coach does for you. How did you do the five phone calls? What did you overcome? What were the steps that you did? What were the things that you did different this week versus last week? And as you write it out and map it out, you're now creating a system in your brain to be able to reproduce week after week after week. Otherwise, every time you do something good, you're starting over again and recreating the wheel. Don't be afraid to seek out a mentor. And I talk about this on a lot of the times that I, when I do talks out and about, and I said, I know this might sound like I'm tooting my own horn because I'm a coach, but hire a coach. Hire a good coach, though. The mere investment alone will get your button gear, I promise. Ask some of my clients that are here. But it's the mastermind and it's that accountability. If I didn't have somebody holding me accountable, if I didn't have Dora stalking me on text every day, I wouldn't have lost seven pounds to fit into this skirt. <laughs> I should have lost eight, though. But, <laughs> but you, you really, the, the, the money that you invest in it and having that knowledge and that person supporting you and backing you up and holding you accountable for your goals, not their goals, is going to help you get into the direction that you need. Also, refocus, again, daily, weekly, and monthly success planning. And then, again, the action. And then it's repeat. Everything we're just saying, and then repeat, and then repeat, and then repeat. Psychology for P. This is a big one. You all, we have all learned a lot about the psychology this weekend. And that is being in the abundant mindset. Caleb started on the Nancy's Receiving the Riches program. After I started the Receiving Riches program, I had my first $10,000 a month the very next month. The program cost like 97 bucks. It was worth it. And then <clears throat> Caleb is now taking it. It talks about not having fear, being abundant, not saying negative things. My mother sent me a bad email. I'm like, look what Granny did. Look, he goes, I'm not going to hear it. We're going to be abundant in the house. We're not, not going to hear No, only abundance. No more fear. No negativity. Not listening to it. Like, oh, my God, I'm living with Nancy Matthews. <laughs> But I appreciate him doing that because he stopped me from getting in my own way and started creating a story. Also in your psychology, know what the psychology is of your clients. This goes back to two, also their ideas and their, um, sorry, their pains and their challenges. What are the pains and challenges that they're experiencing, not what you think? You give them what they, you sell them what you want, what they want, but you give them what they need. If you tell them what they need, they're going to think you're crazy. <clears throat> you also have to identify those things that constantly get in your way every single week. I call them the squirrels. Who saw Up, the movie Up, where the dogs get distracted and they're getting in a fight and they go, squirrel, and they got distracted. So what are your squirrels? What are those bright and shiny objects that get in your way every week? Are you trying to work on paying bills at 3 o'clock when the kids come home? You're going to get constantly distracted? Then do it at 10. But you have to analyze that. And having a mentor or a coach who can help you analyze that will really get you to where you need to go. Clear the deck. How many people have a loose doorknob or a hem that's hanging out or something in your life that I call tolerations that need to be tied up, like loose strings? We've got lists and lists of them. If you'll make a list and get it out of your brain, it'll stop jumbling up your brain, put it on the list, and then just work on one each week and start taking it off. That helps with your psychology as well. 
I call that clearing the deck. This is all on the weekly success planner, which is actually a free gift on my website. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to ask for help. When we don't ask for help, we trip over our cape. Right, Karen? <laughs> She's like, yeah, doing that. And then the last thing in psychology would be gratitude. What are you grateful for? I am so grateful for every single one of you guys that are in this room today. And I'm so grateful for all the things that I've learned from the people that I've already met and know in this room. I've learned so much. I know this stuff. There's so many other, um, other things I don't know. And I'm so grateful for so many of you in this room and all of you that are here today and all of you that supported my son. Thank you. Because each time you did, you gave him a little bit more confidence to think that he could go out in the world and do what he wanted to do. So thank you for that. You is, you're like this one, upgrade your skills, upgrade your friends, and understand your numbers. So upgrade your skills is exactly what you're doing here this weekend. You're getting the knowledge and the skills that you need to grow your business. If, do you need to go learn how to write a website? No, but do you need to know what SEO stands for? Yes, then you go find Dagmar, she can help you. Do you need to know what a balance sheet is? Yes. Do you have to be able to write one? No. <clears throat> Upgrade your friends. Stay away from negative people. We don't have any here. But when you leave, sometimes we can't get away from them because we live with them. But don't try to, con and it's true, but don't try to convince them. Just show them. <clears throat> but be, d hang out with smart, driven, successful people. I am a terrible golfer, right? That's a terrible thing to say. But I have the cute outfits and the nice bag and the squirrel head, co squirrel, squirrel head cover. And I play with good golfers. I always have the worst score, but guess what happens? Every time I play, my score gets better. So if you hang out, mastermind, and associate yourself with smart, driven people who have goals and know what their vision is, you're only going to be pushed to do better. You're only going to be pushed to go forward. I have smart, driven friends. They push me, too. Know your numbers. This is so important. You would not believe, I mean, I meet somebody who makes $70,000 in their business. It's dropped down to 25 and they don't know why. Well, how many this, how many that? They don't have an idea. They don't know the numbers. They don't even know where to find the numbers. You have to, when they talked about this in Infusionsoft yesterday, you have to know how many people you have to sit down with before you actually close the sale. Otherwise, how are you supposed to plan out your week? If I know that I have to talk to five people before they become a client, and let's say a client is $500, so I have to talk to, if I talk to 20 people, how much money would I make? 500 times four, $2,000. You have to know those types of numbers. Okay. L is learn to identify your limitations. I know the language is a little bit. It's not that you're limited and you can't do all these great things. But you have to know what your challenge, and what I mean by that is you have to know what your challenges are and your distractions and those things that get in your way every week. This is a horrible thing to say, but my boyfriend, who is Larry Left Brain, Caleb will never amount to anything. He can't do that. He can't read. He can't write. He can't do this. He can't do that. Thank God Caleb didn't listen. He sure can add up money. He might not know algebra very well, but, but he, he knows what his gifts and strengths are. You don't have to be a financial genius, but you do need to know how many people you have to talk to. You need to know these basic numbers so you can build your business. <clears throat> your tolerations, we talked about that. Don't be afraid to get rid of the crap. And I had to do this. I had to go through this exercise. I got rid of probably two-thirds of everything that I owned that had been in boxes for years. It took me a long time, and I worked on one box at a time. But once I did, I felt just free. It was hard. I didn't want to let go of it. When you get rid of this stuff that's just nagging at you, it frees your mind up to go out and do bigger and better things. Where's Gail? Gail, I don't know if she's here today. Gail comes and cleans my desk off and organizes my office, and I get so much more done when she helps me do that because I get in my own way. Restructuring your system and your time management and having a calendar. Who has more than one planning system or calendar? Okay. You should have only one. 
If they sync, that's not what I mean. But you can't use a paper calendar and an electronic calendar and the backs of envelopes and sticky notes. And some of you are going, oh, where's that envelope? I know that person's number on there somewhere, right? <laughs> and your systems. I know Stacy Clark is here. She's really good at systems. But you have to have systems in place. I just got involved with Infusionsoft because all my systems were not talking to each other. Whether you're at that place or not, it's up to you. But you have to have your own system. It has to be a system that works for you. Martha Stewart is not coming over for a cocktail party. She doesn't know where you live. Nothing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to work for you, whatever it is that you use. The last one is T. I'm not going to tell you what T stands for yet. The little bonus thing that I want to tell you, and it's something I talked about on the call that I did on how to have your first $10,000 month. And then I'm going to tell you the number one reason why people fail in their business. When I had my first $10,000 month, what happened? Yeah, it was mindset. Yeah, it was planning. It was all this. It was all that stuff I just talked about. You have to be ready for business. There's 95% of the people in this room, if I asked you what you did and how much you cost, well, it, it, dep it depends. And, and, what, and see, what I do is, and let me, let me just explain. I just want to explain it, Lucy. You know what you do, but you've got to be ready for business. What I did, and this is so simple, you're going to go, that's genius. I read an article that says, are you ready for business? At the time, I said, I want 17 one-on-one -on -one clients, two groups, four speaking engagements. I had it all lined up. I didn't have all that. I made sure I had 17 welcome packets with strategy sessions in there, a price list, but I had four strategy sessions per packet because I knew I had to talk to four to get one, right? And they were sitting there, no names, just waiting. They were coming. I didn't know them yet. Guess what? They all came the next month because I was ready for business because now I was booking strategy sessions because I knew what to say. I knew what to ask. I knew what to tell them. I knew I could help them. I knew I could help them grow their business before. It's, well, just give me a moment. I've got to look this up. I was ready for business. You have to be ready for business. If you're not ready for business, how can you help other people? The number one reason why people fail, and I know before you came here this weekend, a lot of people here were thinking this. It's because they give up too soon. They quit. They give up too soon. They quit right before they're supposed to be successful. Got it. So T stands for triumph. The definition of triumph, to gain a victory, to be victorious, to win, to gain mastery, prevail, to triumph over fear, to be successful, achieve success, exalt over victory, rejoice over success, elated, proudly, and glory. All the words that I've heard people using. So be triumphant in your business. But what's the number one thing that you have to focus on? Be ready for business, but... Income producing activities. Income producing activities is not writing a blog, sorry. Not unless there's something that comes along with it. You have to know the things that go along with your blogs. You have to know the things that go along with your articles. Things that have to go along with your videos. All this busy work in your website. There are income producing activities and then there's busy work. <clears throat> so we have a class coming up in November. It's only four weeks, 90 minutes every Monday. It's a tough class. I think I made my health coach eat sugar after wherever she is. She went through it. She sent me a text that I made her eat her daughter's animal crackers after going through it. But it teaches you what, an what income producing are. It helps you to stop making noise with your marketing and be exhausted at the end of the day and start making money. You'll come out with a plan. You'll have a tactical marketing plan. You'll know exactly what you need to do to put money in your bank account each and every day and stop focusing on the things that are not putting money in your bank account. It is on my website. It's $3.97 for four weeks. You also have group coaching that comes along with that. For the unconference, though, after talking to Nancy, it's only going to be $1.97. You get to work personally with me. If you're in WPN, you get to work personally with me anyway. 
because <laughs> I love WPN. You get to work personally with me. You get to work personally with the people who are in that group because we have a private Facebook group as well. But it's 197 today only. It's on my website. Jake and Caleb and myself can help you get signed up. The first 10 people will have a one-hour strategy session with me to help map out your plan once the class is over to make sure that you have everything in line. And if you are coaching with WPN, I will make sure that I communicate with whoever you're coaching with so we make sure we are in line because you cannot have more than one coach. You have one person who has helped guiding you where you need to go. What so you, time is it? It's from 12 to 1.30, but everything is recorded. You get all the recordings. You get access to all the materials. You have access to everyone in the group. And there's a private Facebook page as well. So, Shelly, what do you want them to do to sign up for the class? I want them to see me, Jake, or Caleb. And where will you all be? Caleb's over there. Jake's over there. I'll be down there. No, 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 no. Where do you want them to be? Pick a place. How about back there? That How about that over corner there. over there? That corner over there. Right next to Dr. Yvonne, right next to Teresa Velarde. That's How's that? Right. Perfect. Teresa, Perfect. raise your hand. If you want more information about this workshop, and it sounds like it's awesome. It is awesome, and you can also... You'll see Shelly over there. Thank you. Or Caleb over there, and they'll all be over in that corner mm -hmm. over there. Awesome. It's on my... And the weekly success planner, which is free, you can get. It's on my website, mypersonalbusinesscoach.com. And if you want to see what the class is about, we'll have the computers open. It's on there, too. It says IPA. So income-producing activities, be ready for business. I cannot wait to come back next year and see how many people we have oh. that are no longer Dorit, but Dorit the Connector, yeah. you yeah. know, or the people who are making money. You know what the cool thing is? You don't have to wait till next year. At Level oh, Up, mm. you're going to see that. In January, you. oh, you're going to see that. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I just got goosebumps. You're going to see Look it tomorrow. Goosebumps. Awesome. Let's hear it for Shelly Yay. Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Income producing activities. If your list doesn't include any of those, make sure that it does. It's really important.